Hello computer modders and water cooling enthusiasts. Today I would like to talk about heat shrink. This is another question that asked throughout the store gazillion times. I'm totally tired to explaining it. So I'll make a tutorial once and we'll link to this video so you enjoy it and um, figure out what kind of heat shrink you need for your project. I think it's pretty obvious, but I guess it might be confusing for some people. So I'll try to explain what this heat shrink does and how to select it correctly, at least in my personal opinion. So first of all, what the hell is heat shrink is? While well, the sort of the plastic thingy that when applied with heat, it reduces its diameter. And I'll show you how it works. So we have a heat gun here, all right? Woo. And we have heat ring. So if we start heating heat ring, I'll try to show you in the front or white. You see what's happening? So that recovers diameter. So let's say it was 10 millimeters and it became 5 millimeters. So it's a half. Actually, it's even less, but it doesn't matter. So, when heat apply, heat shrinks became smaller. And what it's used for, you can put your sleeve on your wire to make modding project. And you need to fix the sleeving on the wire well, so it doesn't move anywhere. So this is the purpose of heat shrink. Heat shrink might come with a glue inside, which makes things even more. Um, strong grip and uh, full insulation against water and stuff like this which is not applicable for computers but nevertheless or it can be without the glue and it just holds on the strength of its shrinking capacity so to speak so people asking me all the time what is 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1 it's very simple this is just the ratio it shrinks to so if you have a 2 to 1 heat shrink it just shrinks in half so you have 10 millimeters it becomes five that's simple as that now if you have three to one and the same 10 millimeters became even smaller it shrinks to 33 percent so theoretically in the ideal words will be like 3.3 millimeter and four to one logically the same thing it's it shrinks to the quarter so of the size so 10 millimeters became 2.5 millimeters simple as that why different sizes well it's very simple if you have uh, just straight wire simple thing that uh, without a little metal connector on the end and you can put heat shrink very easily so you can select heat shrink just barely more than your wire and the uh, sleeving assembly so you just put it on and shrink it so you can use the smallest possible uh, heat shrink ratio for, for, for do the job but let's imagine that you have some sort of crazy connector attached to your wire which cannot be removed for whatever reason right so you have this big thing in the end but you need to fix your heat shrink on other side of your connector in this situation basically you need a huge heat shrink tube that you can put above your connector move it in, on, on the side part of the your wire assembly and then still shrink it to the size that allows you to grip whatever you're gripping behind the, your connector that's why you choose different sizes example let's say you're sleeving ATX wires you know the ATX pin it's even smaller than your wire itself so when you put your your heat shrink on on ATX wires uh, basically the difference in diameter can be fraction like half millimeter and you still okay and you grip it well so 2.1 always work no problem another example let's say you would like to sleeve a uh, SATA data cable and and even not the straight one or like 90 degree one right so you have this big piece of plastic and the end of the cable that no way you can remove or anything like this. So in this situation, a uh, four to one actually is the best choice because you put, you have like 12 millimeter size of the heat shrinks that you go above the plastic. And after that, you need to actually shrink it to maybe 
uh, like uh, less than a half right so of its size so the bigger higher rating of shrinking is required for such jobs so just watch what you're doing and uh, is there any obstacle you need to overcome and um, go to the place where you actually would like to make your grip now um, glue versus non-glue I personally always use the glue one because I, it grips very well and it's like when it's done it's done right but I know a lot of people don't like to do it because the glue sometimes come off my secret to avoid the situation when the glue come out is first of all you don't want to move cables right when you, you apply the heat, uh, heat shrink and it shrink don't try to yank it because when you <coughs> glue already melted so you start taking it away and the glue stays on your sleeving and doesn't look good so try to make the job properly to start with second don't try to use um, some people think okay i'll have the 4.1 one size of heat shrink and um, and i'll just use it for everything actually the more uh, heat shrink shrinks the more glue actually get uh, opportunity to escape out out from the heat shrink itself so if you use a, a smallest possible shrinking um, diameter that you need so you have less glue coming out right so what I'm saying is that for example <coughs> theoretically on a two millimeter sleeving wires for your uh, ATX cables you can put let's say three millimeter heat shrink and uh, shrink it just one millimeter right or also you can put let's say four to one uh, by two like eight millimeter heat shrink and shrink it to, to two millimeter is still grip but you know the amount of shrinkage so huge so the glue is not perfect so you might have glue coming out just because it's shrinkage happening too much right so you follow me right so anyways so that's the thing but if you don't want to deal with glue just go without heat shrink it wouldn't be as strong as glued um, and it's wooden grip on uh, connectors as well because for example if you want to sleeve something like a uh, fan cable and you want to have heat shrink going on the wire on your sleeving and also go a little bit on top of your connector so if you have no glue so basically you can yank the whole assembly um, away if you pull the sleeving because it doesn't really grip that well but if you use a glue one good luck to do that it will be melted to that thing right so it's very strong i don't know if you need it or not but i kind of like to do it this way all right so that's basically the situation with the heat shrink all you need to do to make sure that you can put heat shrink and the heat shrink a little bit bigger than whatever you're putting on and when it's recovered it's uh, size became smaller it's actually became a little bit should be a little bit smaller than what you're trying to cover right so again ATX wires two millimeters or one eighth so the heat ring the best using something like three millimeter and doesn't matter which ratio anyone will work here and you shrink it a little bit and it grips perfect right but if you go higher heat shrink ratio you can use as I said like six millimeter uh, for 3.1 still work for six millimeter for 4.1 still work but you shrink much more and uh, you pay a little bit more as well actually so using the correct size of heat shrink save you money so remember about that so if you have some obstacle on the way like a big connector sticking here then you have no choice but have a heat shrink that goes bigger bigger size that connector itself but when it shrink you still need to meet your target of two millimeters or whatever you're working for right well that's pretty much it very very simple logic again i hope that will help you to select a heat shrink properly and uh, that's not a real rocket science it's a very common sense thing all right okay thank you very much guys thank you for watching uh if you have burning question put it right there i will consider to make tutorial as well especially we have something that we sell in our store